we could look on this game in five years, the awakening of the uh, of the Detroit Lions. Of the Detroit Lions, this could even have more cultural impact. This yeah. specific game, because what if we become a dynasty? What if we? I mean, let's pump the brakes. <laughs> let's pump the fucking brakes. <laughs> Welcome to Games With Names. I'm Julian Edelman, they're Jack and Kyler, and we are on a mission to find the greatest game of all time. On today's episode, we're covering the week one 2023 season opener between Detroit Lions and the Kansas City defending Super Bowl banner dropping Chiefs with actor, comedian, and star of Transformers 1 in theater September 20th, Keegan Michael Key. Let's go. We get into talking with Keegan, life as a diehard Detroit's fan. When I was a young kid, we still hung our hats on, well, we won the 1957 championship, but you can't do that in the 20s. We also talk about how crazy of a beast Calvin Johnson was. You can't be that big and be that fast. Yeah. He is an impossible human. We decide which NFL stars are Transformers characters. Who's a Megatron of the NFL right, right now? Right now? Yeah. Mike Evans. What about TJ Watt? Oh, TJ Watt's even better. That's better. And then we wrap it up by recapping the freaking live show. We haven't even talked it about it. It's a movie, it. bro. So you got to stick around to the very end. Let's go. Let's go. Games with Names is a production of iHeartRadio. September 7th, 2023, <laughs> Arrowhead Stadium, Kansas City, Missouri. It is the NFL kickoff, and the defending Super Bowl champs are hosting my Lions. But MC, DC, and the boys from D-Town are so back. This is the Arrowhead, Arrowhead Awakening. Awakening. Yeah. Welcome to Games With Names. We have a very special guest. Today we are looking at week one of the 2023 football season. Opening the season, a Thursday night football game between the Lions and the defending Super Bowl champs, the Kansas City Chiefs here with Keegan, Michael, Key. Welcome to the studio, bro. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. It's my pleasure or, to be here, coming. man. I, I feel great. like he should be having us. That's why I said hey, thanks for, for having us. Right. <laughs> oh, that's very sweet. No, I, I'm, I'm, I am so happy to be here. I'm beside myself with pleasure, and and I'm thrilled. I've watched your career, and I just think you're you you were such a fantastic player. You had such a great career, and I'm I'm just, I'm happy to be here. And I also, frankly, I love athletes. I love talking with athletes. I like sometimes one thing I like to do is compare the industries a little bit because Love. they're performance-based. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's a little more subject subjectivity in our industry, yeah. but I, st I still think a person, you have to kind of lock in and get up for the, the big moment, and you've done that so many times in your career. I appreciate that, yeah. man. Well, we're, we're so excited to have you talk about the Detroit Lions here in the Nut House. It's such a... You know, I've been so pro-Detroit before the MCDC run, uh -huh, uh -huh. but just in general, because, you know, my, my, my father is an auto mechanic, you know, the automotive industry is so close to me, like, as far as the big three, four GM Chrysler, like, I always liked Detroit, it was a tough town, and, you know, this game that we're about to talk about exemplifies the start of where this, you know, this tough era is going so can you describe to us in one sentence why you picked this game yeah I, I i picked this i actually picked this game because it was a perfect example of what dan campbell's philosophy is which yes. is grit it, it 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 is a perfect it's a it's an actual personification an active personification of that philosophy yeah and that's why i wanted to pick this game there are a couple other games that i could think of even from the previous season when you go, oh, I'm starting to see the feeling, uh, 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 or I'm getting a feeling of hope, but this game is actually showing some, it's like rolling out the blueprint and showing some of the architecture. It's like, if this is a roller coaster ride, we're building the roller coaster. Yeah. This game shows that architecture before, it's almost before the ride begins. Does that yeah, make sense? It does. This is this is the this is the framework. This is what the car, you know, the car is going to be on. This is what this is this is this is the blueprint. And now let's build this house. 
Yeah, because yeah. you, you guys you guys scouted you guys scouted the roller coaster last year. You guys were kind of like looking into like what style roller coaster. Coaster, we have. yeah, we're gonna have a lot of corkscrews. Yeah, we're we gonna have huge, you know, no, no zero G's. What what exactly are we gonna and, do? And yeah. then you know, training camp, organized team activities, mini camp. You guys started putting the blueprints, and we were building off of what we really wanted That's to do. Exactly. You got it. You got the analogy. And this yeah. is freaking opening day. Uh, opening day. This is opening day at, at Wally World. <laughs> it opened up, and I and Wally World, and it's not closed. It's not Wally closed. Wally World is not closed. It's, it's like, not. It let's go not in there. Be, it's funny too. Country. <laughs> it's funny that I. It's interesting. I, I don't even. I don't know that I meant to do this, but ironically speaking, I just picked an amusement park. I you know I grew up in Detroit, which is very close to a place called Sandusky, Ohio. Yes, Cedar, Cedar Point. Point. Cedar Point. Cedar Point. All timer. The, uh, all, has been in time, and uh, you, you can fact check this. I think I'm right about this. I have Back enough confidence. Nice. It, I think, second best or has been ranked in the past second best amusement park in the world behind some amusement park in Japan. I can't remember where it is, but uh, they like they you know like people test different kinds of rides, and Cedar Point's like the place, one of the places, and so I, that's why that that analogy comes to my mind. I, so I, I went to Kent State. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we would go to Cedar Point in the summer with the boys. Yep. Electric. Uh, amazing. But uh, is so, like, do the Midwest people... Like, it, so it is true. You guys like to raise banners for, like, second place. We're, we're t the second the, the best. The second place, so yeah. Is, this, is it the Indianapolis Colts of theme parks? Of theme parks. Right, the I mean, it's very respectable. They always have a really good player. But, yeah. you know, you you go into the AFC Championship, you lose, and you throw a banner And you up. throw a banner up. We go, we did second place. It's the same thing when L.A. won the Super Bowl a couple years ago. Everybody in Detroit went, yay! <laughs> <laughs> just like... Because Matthew Stafford, Matthew Stafford left and went. We were so happy for him. We're like, we're Super Bowl adjacent. We're Super Finally. Bowl adjacent. Yeah, yeah. Adjacent. Now, is this the greatest game of all time? Uh, it, it is. This is, I, I will say this. I think this may be the greatest game of all time for the Detroit Lions franchise. I think this is bigger than when uh, Barry Sanders like uh, just went all out of his mind against Dallas in 90, 91, 92. Yeah. And um, I, that game was huge. But you... The 90s is somehow, I mean, it's just math, right? The 90s is certainly closer to the 50s than the aughts are to the 50s or the 20s are to the 50s. So that 30, that gap, that over 30-year gap is huge. And the fact that if you were a young, when I was a young kid, we still hung our hats on, well, we won the 1957 championship, you, you know what I mean? But you can't do that in the 20s. Yeah. Not, not in this new, it's, it was just too long of a drought and too significant of a drought. There was this was so harrowing. I thought to myself, okay, after the previous season, after beating Green Bay, first of all, uh, winning a divisional game in Lambeau against Aaron Rodgers, uh, ending on a pick, it was it was the hope was so high you could you could taste it, and then I was deflated when I saw the schedule come out. I go, why it's us? We've got to play KC yeah. in Arrowhead. Yeah, and I thought to myself. Maybe I, I afforded myself just a small hint of hope. I mean, I believe in Dan. I believe in Brad Holmes, our general manager. I think we can win this game. The fact that they came out with the victory, it, I think this it is such a marked change in the culture of Detroit football. Those games that we would lose, those games that when we get into overtime, they're going, oh, they're just going to march down the field and get a field goal and win. Those games where you're like, all we need to do is stop them here. You know, the, yeah. Detroit's big, one of our big signature things was always, it's like 232 in the fourth quarter. You're like, well, we're gonna, they're just going to get whatever first down they need, and the team would always get the first down. Four-minute offense. Four-minute offense, and we'd always collapse. Always. And they would just seal the deal. And... I, I, this game, this game is going to be one of the most important games, if not the most important game in the annals of Detroit Lions football history, because of seeing this blueprint in action, seeing the culture literally change. I, we I, needed this win. I, I, I can, I can see that. I don't think you're crazy for saying that. Mm -hmm. Like that is going out and beating the defending Super Bowl champs after playing your best football at the end of this, at the end of the year. Yep, yep, yep. After a rough, rough start. You know, the end of the year, they they were playing really good ball, really and good to, ball. To go out and then we'll get we'll dive into the game, but to to sh to to go out and beat the the defending champs on a platform where everyone is watching, that gives your team confidence and to do it, it that that's like a that's like a switch that like guys, hey, we believe actually what we're we're preaching here now. That's right. a, that's a confirmation on everything that the coaches were saying from that point on after the season. 
you know, after the great uh, ending of their season, that right there, everything that they were, you know, preaching to have that come out and, and start the season the way they did. That was that's that. I mean, I don't think you're crazy for saying that. No, I I, I appreciate it. I, it says it says so much about the direction that the team was going in. No, yeah. and and I remember. I mean, I was jazzed when we were on Hard Knocks, and I, I thought that HBO made a really good choice. That that was the right time to do it. We were the right time to pick. It's like pick a team when it looks like there's going to be a, a significant culture change. Yeah. And I, I want to give a lot of credit to Sheila Hamp, uh, to Sheila Ford Hamp, who's our who's our team owner, who um and and also to Mrs. Ford, who is our team owner emeritus. You, you know, um, Sheila. I thought Sheila took a very big swing, a very courageous, big. And I thought it was a shrewd and a smart swing when she got Matt Patricia. I, I could see that in her mind, she's going, let's go somebody with somebody who's been in a culture, in a winning culture for a long, a person you know very well, yeah. who's been in a culture for a very long time. I, I think he might be able to make the shift. She made the right. The thinking was right. Yeah. The thinking was right. So I thought I, I was really, I started feeling hopeful when Sheila kind of took over the reins for her mom. Um, uh, Martha is a passionate football person. She loves her team. She loves the staff. Uh, I think it was right for her to kind of go, I'm going to give the reins over to my daughter. I think she's got good ideas. I think she's moving in the right direction. Yeah. So I, I have to give her kudos for that Matt Patricia hire. And, and then, um, you know, I think that Dan, unless you're in the league or a real huge sports maven, Dan was an, not a not a completely unproven quantity because I thought he did really good stuff in Miami. Yeah, and um, but he 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 again was the right choice. She just went swinging for the fences again. The shrewd choice was Brad Holmes. Yeah, I, I it was so funny. I, I I go oh I think this guy might be the this might be the piece. So somebody whose whose career was has been spent scouting. Yeah, scouting scouting scouting, and for him to say we're going to build this team through the draft. It's just balls. It takes balls. I'm, we're not going to spend a ton of money. We're going to be, the word is shrewd. We're going to be shrewd. And we're going to make, make informed choices to build a future for this team. That's another thing I love about our team. Yeah. Is that we're building a team that could be good for a decade. It's not, let's go try to win a Super Bowl in one year. Let's spend all of our money, bankrupt ourselves. Yeah. Go for, what if you don't win? What if you don't get the Stan Kroenke? What if you don't get the Stafford effect and you don't win the Super Bowl? And then and then what happens? Yeah. Then no. what happens? So I, I just shout out to Sheila Hamp. Yeah, yeah. They've definitely gone foundational. Foundational. This is you absolutely know, and it and it and that starts from the leader. And you know, I'll get into more of the lines and where I believe in them when we'll get in there. But you know, MCDC is a great fit for that city. Mm -hmm. I mean, the toughness. And, you know, to, to show what he's shown, you know, everyone kind of thought he was just a big old meathead. But, you know, the guy, the guy knows football. They didn't know, and they, he knows football. They didn't know what he meant. I don't think they knew what he meant when he said grit. Yeah. Because when he says grit, I think part of grit is also mental fortitude. Not just testicular fortitude, <laughs> yeah. but but mental, cerebral fortitude. Yeah. It's both. It's like you said, people thought he was a meathead and he's... You know, he got the passion, got the best of him, and he said the kneecaps thing and blah, 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 blah. It's the mental fortitude. On Hard Knocks, he did that thing where he shook out the jeans, the dust out of the, the clothes and said, we've got to get this off. We're not that team. Be, just because you're here in Allen Park, Michigan, in this training facility, let it. you got to let all that go at the door. We're not. We're different. We're, it's, it's been amazing to watch. It is. That, it's, that, that the culture and the philosophy is actually working. Yeah. It, it, it is. You know, and and he's he just he's a Detroit guy. He is played a, there, gritty, blue collar. Work, you know, let's just put our heads down and work. He is, you know, yeah. Now, what's what's your sport? What's your sports hierarchy with with all your your teams that you follow? Do you follow the red? Do you follow all the Detroit teams? I, I, I know I, Penn State. You went there. I you went look to Penn like State. the coach. Yeah, <laughs> you look like, like the coach. I don't have my glasses <laughs> on right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, like, what? How do? How? So, my here, here's, clearly, you you love sport. I mean, the way you talk about the, the Lions. Yeah, yeah. Are here, you the, are you like this with every sport? Almost, almost every sport. So, I have a I have a very strange hierarchy. You yeah. ready for this? This oh, is a I very this. weird hierarchy. Okay. So uh, in Detroit, the city of Detroit, 
football, hands down, my number one, far and away my favorite number one sport. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I will make this clarification for the rest of the the list. American football, American football <laughs> is my my favorite sport. Need to okay nowadays. Uh, nowadays, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Detroit Lions. Then, then I would say probably after that, I pay in Detroit sports. I pay the most attention to the Tigers. Um. Even though I'm more of a basketball fan than I am a baseball fan, I pay attention to the Tigers. They win because they win. Yeah, they win. Then, then they're back and forth. Like they always sneak a freaking World well, Series here. And, like, every, every now and again, they pop in. Like what the hell? The yeah. Lions, or I mean, the Tigers. Yes. Yeah. And then um, right now they're having like you know they're at 500. They yeah. were they were they, they were having a rough like July, and then all of a sudden they started winning games. Yeah. And they've been winning games for the tour, uh, back end of the season. So I'm really happy that it looks like they're going to have a strong ending. Yeah, yeah. Tied there in second, tied for second are the Red Wings. So I know we're kind of in it. We've been in a little bit of a rebuild for yeah. a, a, almost a decade now. Um, but you know, we were we were the Yankees of hockey for a while there. I mean, it was nuts. Winning presidents trophies every year. Um, so I, I I was swept up in that. And I used to go when when they were bad before Steve Eiserman in the early eighties. I used to get like nine fifty or eleven dollars. You just walk into Joe Louis Arena and kind of sit where you wanted. It was insane. You, the, oh, it was wow, that's like a Panthers ticket now. Yeah, it's like a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're talking with Darren McCarty. I think he's going to come on the show. Oh, Darren We're going to do the the Fright Night and the Joe. Yeah. We're going to try to get Claude Lemieux on, too. Oh, Maybe. you Claude Lemieux and, and McCarty. Together. Oh, the grinder. Yeah, we'll Oh, see. that would be amazing. Shout out our talent. Um, uh, McCarty, by the way, doing a great job in our local Detroit media. He's great, really knowledgeable about football, really, really good sports head. Yeah. yeah. And and then the Pistons. Now I was just like everybody else, the Bad Boys, all that stuff. I was I love the Bad Boys. Um, I stay in, in contact. I'm a personal friend with Isaiah Thomas, which is really great. My wife kind of orchestrated that for me. My wow. wife. Yeah. one of the one of the many things I love my Zeke. wife for. Yeah. And um, Zeke is amazing. Again, another. We have three sports right now that are looking to the Lions. I think w- with inspiration in their hearts as they move forward. Then uh, I think right after that. Uh, uh, Liverpool. Ooh, I'm a huge Liverpool fan. Up the Reds, baby. Yes, Let's go. Yeah, go Reds. Yes, you never walk alone. That's right. I'm a huge Reds fan. I T O Y S. Lo- yeah, I love. Oh, come he's on, a Tottenham you guys. Oh, you're oh Tottenham. Harry Kane. Tottenham. Harry Kane. Harry Kane. <laughs> Harry Kane. Um, who's with Real Madrid? Where's he? Right? He's, he's yeah, not he there anymore. That's why. I but he was great as far as. And then what's his name? Son. Yeah, I love he's Son. a badass. He's from Korea. He's amazing. And uh, yeah, yeah. So Premier League, I like Premier League. I watch a lot of Champions League. Um, Liverpool is my team. It's been my team since the nineties. Um, I, I have to uh, clarify that as a soccer fan. When nowadays you have to clarify that you were pre soccer fad era. Era, yeah. yeah I, Which was, if you're a nineties Liverpool fan from America, you're, you're that's OG, bro. You're, you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a uh, what do they call it? A hexagon head. <laughs> A hexagon head? A hexagon head. Right? He got hexagon head. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the little hex guys yeah. on the ball. Right, yeah, right, right. What, what, seam head is baseball. Seam head. Yeah. Puck head is hockey. Yeah. Hexagon, hexagon head. I, I, like, just... I like the alliteration. <laughs> hexagon head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Um, Not a word guy. So Liverpool. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Liverpool is my uh, Liverpool. Then staying with international football. Uh, after them, I watch a lot of um, my great grandparents and my, and my grandmother are Belgian. I watch the Belgian national team. They just got worked by France because yeah. everybody does because France is amazing. But so I, whenever I can, I watch their like uh, UEFA Nations League games, qual- World Cup qualifiers. That's my team. Now, Flemish or French? My f- great grandfather spoke Flemish okay, before okay, he went okay. to Detroit. Before he, and and then of course you have there's the Walloon area. There's the yeah, Flemish yeah. area. So and then some people speak sp- uh, German. Yeah, well, so that's my family. Yeah, I that's have, right. I have family in Belgium. Uh, did you really? Yeah, yeah. Germans. Antwerp. No, nah, I don't even know. You know, you know yeah, I mean, they're still there too. Yeah, but um, shout out. Yeah, yeah, so shout out to the shout out to the Belgians. Love My, love those waffles. It's so freaking. <laughs> so Tent to Ishi. Yeah. So uh, um, I watch the uh, Belgian national team because, of course, even though I'm a Liverpool fan, you know, one of the greatest yeah. midfielders in the world is Kevin De Bruyne. Blizzard beast. Man, he's the beast. Absolutely. Very, very frustrated right now. With the new lineup in his team, he's yeah. not, not at Man City, but at Belgium. We we can't. They're, they're in this rebuild. They've kind of gone through their golden generation, yeah. and a lot of those players have have kind of sloughed off. And they've got a whole brand new squad and a brand new manager, and it's a whole thing. Got to so, start over. Got to start over. So I've been watching them, and then um, 
And then I'm uh, and it, so it's that's and then Penn kind of, State's last. Penn Penn State's Penn State comes is mixed. Penn State's like tied with Liverpool. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's tied with Liverpool because I gotta. I try to keep track of. Um, I mean, now with the Big Ten, it's like, oh my god, oh my. we got eighteen <laughs> teams. Um, but yeah, so I my alma mater. It's like Lions, Nittany Lions, the Reds, and then and then it, and then and then everything else kind of falls. A lot into of cats. Place. A lot of cat. A lot of cats. I got double double Lions. <laughs> yeah, double like Lions. Yeah. I honestly always thought that was so cool about Detroit that the baseball and the football team had kind of you know the same Some ish. Synergy. Yeah. I like what other Lions What other Tigers cities are and, like that? I don't think there's other cities that have like you're, you're saying similar, yeah, connect, similar connected, connected, uh, connected, connected mascots. Tissue. Yeah. Pittsburgh has the same color, the color scheme. scheme. Yeah. Arizona or Cardinals were St. Louis and uh, baseball and football back when. Oh, that's right. There. Yeah. That's right. The Cardinals same football, name, which is crazy. Same name. That's right. Yeah. And the Lions were named the Lions because of the Tigers. That's what I mean. Oh, the there we Tigers, go. The Tigers. I can't. I just read the history of how the Tigers got their name, and it's something very fun and. It's very kind of interesting historically. I can't remember what it was, but the Lions were the Portsmouth Spartans Whoa. from Ohio. And then the, one of our big, there was a Port big- Smith the Sport. Portsmouth The Portsmouth Spartans. And little town of Portsmouth, Ohio. And then um, we had a big radio- It's got to be mobile. on the lake, right? Yeah. I mean, it's it must be. It has yeah. to be on, yeah. on Erie. Yeah. yeah. And they, uh, and then who was the, his name was Edwards, George Edwards. He was, um, is that right? Yeah, I think so. He was uh, he was a, a, a radio mogul in Detroit, and he bought the team and moved to Detroit, 1934. And they changed the name. They said we should we should be like another big cat, or like we want to be the kings of the league. And then they thought it made sense because the Tigers were there, so they called them. The, that's what that's yeah. funny that you noticed that. That's why they they named it the Lions. I've always liked that. Yeah, Our Lions. I like North. connected tissue with the pro sports. Our Baltimore producer is saying Orioles Ravens too. Orioles Ravens. That's good. Oh, That's smart. Birds. Orioles Ra Orioles Ravens. But one's yeah. a different. Like one's like a beautiful bird. One wants to like <laughs> rip your face yeah. off. You can't name a football team after Shout a out Allen Bow. Do you watch those YouTube videos about crows and ravens? Oh, yes. that freaks oh, me out, man. Yeah. It freaks me out. How smart they are. I don't, but my daughter does, and she's terrified of them. Shout it's out Lily. They're they're it's too smart. Yes. Way too smart. Yeah. 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 You got to tell us something non-Detroit people get wrong about Detroit. Something, something that you know, Detroit has had a lot of challenges throughout the years and has, su has suffered a lot. I think something that people um, need to keep in mind about Detroit is that for in the last few years, something that's been really rough about Detroit is that we've been dealing a lot with um, with with abandonment issues. And I think people think people thought because it, it was really bad in the '80s during the the crack epidemic, which was striking cities all over the, yeah, uh, yeah. the country and ravaging cities all over the country. But Detroit's not Detroit's nowhere near as violent a city. I think our bigger issue in Detroit um, is dealing with infrastructure because so many people had moved out of the city. Yeah. So people think I think one thing that people think about Detroit is that uh, it's this dangerous place and there's bullets flying all over the place. It's not. It's not that way. Yeah. It's not that way. The biggest the bigger issue is that there's is that we have uh, what is known uh, this ph phenomenon known as urban prairies which is lots of buildings being torn down and that there being lots of areas without uh, without housing. But then the, 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 the tax base is tough because you still pay for those areas, but there's no one living in there to pay for the tax base. That's that's pretty negative. I think something that people need to know about Detroiters, the Detroiters are lovely, lovely Midwestern people who look out for each other. 100%. It's that, it's that, it, it, that's... That's the part of Detroit that people don't talk about because it's not sensational. Yeah. You have to understand that Detroiters, like anybody else who lives in Indiana or Illinois or Ohio or Wisconsin, were very, um, very neighborly people. Like uh, you'll, you, like sometimes I'll go home to Detroit and I'll be in an Uber, and then you're like, I'm having a conversation. And you'll have a conversation with the Uber driver the entire way, <laughs> right? Where that doesn't always happen in New York or Los Angeles. And I'll go, oh, that's right, I'm home. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna have a conversation. <laughs> or two people stop on the street and then just talk for 25 minutes. Yeah. And it's like, I had some place to be, but it was so good to see you that I wanted to have a, you know what I mean? I that do. kind of, that, that notion of being neighborly with people yeah. is something that I experienced my whole life growing up. Not there. in a rush. Not like in a that. rush. Not in a rush. It's, yeah. Everyone, people come out here, everyone's in a rush to get nowhere. And we also. <laughs> <laughs> In a rush to get nowhere, yeah. Anyone's in a rush to get nowhere. Not in Ohio. I would I went to school in Ohio, yeah. so I get the Midwest people. I love them. You know, people that are just hardworking people that, you know, they're content with their lives. They don't really 
complain that much. They like going home. They like working their their job, yep. whatever it yep. is, and then going home and watching their sport. That, that's they pretty love, much it. Yeah, they love that. Yeah, that's the story. What's and wrong with that? There's not it's it's life, nothing. baby. I love that. It's nothing. It's very simple. Something wonderful and simplistic about it. You know. Yeah. Also, the other thing about Detroit is we have fantastic restaurants in Detroit. I bet fantastic restaurants, and we have our own cuisine. Our thing in in Detroit is uh, if you ever go to if you go to Detroit, you got to have a coney dog, yeah. which which is a chili dog. You know, a chili dog. With uh, what we call chili sauce, as opposed to just chili on the dog, it's, it's there's some different ingredients: chili sauce and onions and cheese. What and, kind of cheese? And, American um, cheddar. So um, American. So okay. it's like uh, you can have Amer there's some Coney Islands serve cheddar, some serve American, and some Coney Islands have like the like the liquid like, like yeah, the nacho yeah. cheese that you get at whiz, a ball game, like whiz. cheese whiz. It's fantastic. And then chili fries with cheese. You got you got you got to get your fries. That's your base. Then you drop. My favorite, you drop a, a nice slice of American cheese in there that's melted on the fries, then chili, then another slice. It's just sublime. Manna. I'm a big chili dog guy. There's two Coney Islands. You go to Detroit sometime. If you're ever there, Julian, and you guys are doing something there, there's, there's, a, there's two buildings. They're right next to each other. There's a split right down the middle. And they're called Coney Islands. One's called Lafayette Coney Island, and the other one's called American Coney Island. Two, two separate owners. They're literally next door to each Full other. Full rivalry. So it, you, Who are you? Uh, I, I am an American Coney Island guy. I like it. But Lafayette's been there for way, way longer. So when you bring people to Detroit, people, some people go, you have to go to Lafayette Coney Island. I prefer American Coney Island. Now I'm going to get in trouble <laughs> with certain neighborhoods in the city because when you bump into people, you can go, Lafayette? Uh, Coney Island. Uh, <laughs> yeah. American. You know what I mean? You're like, oh, man, okay. I don't even talk to you <laughs> yeah, no more. Yeah, I get so, it. And yeah, so, yeah. I'm a Carney's guy out here. Oh, Carney's is great. I love Carney's. Carney's is great. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's, I think it's better than Pink's. The Carney's is better than Pink's. I think. It's My daughter good. likes the snappiness of the hot dogs. She goes, "Dad, they're snappy." <laughs> that's a is good, that Vienna that's baby. A, that's a good word. It is. I like snappy. Snap, Snap al dente, the casing yeah. baby. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Transformers One, the franchise's first ever fully CG animated movie, is hitting theaters September twentieth. This is the untold origin story of Optimus Prime and Megatron. These sworn enemies were once friends bonded like brothers. It's made for all audiences in mind, so there's something for everyone to enjoy. And it's got a star-studded voice cast, Chris Hemsworth, Brian Tyree Henry, Scarlett Johansson, Keegan-Michael Key, Steve Buscemi, Lawrence Fishburne, and John Hamm. It's a fun one. Love a good origin story. And be sure to visit the dedicated Transformers store at Amazon.com slash Transformers. It has over a hundred Transformers products, including Amazon exclusives, special deals, and the hottest items inspired by the Transformers One film. Prime members enjoy fast, free shipping on every order. Go check it out. Now, uh, big Transformer guy when you were a kid? Yes. Love Transformers. I did too. Love Transformers when I was a kid. Used to come home. It would air in the weekdays, yeah. you know, like 3.30, you know, you get home from school and yeah. then there's that little block of cartoons. Yep. I would watch Transformers. Was I loved it. Went to go see the movie, the 1986 animated movie. Oh, wow. And uh, and I remember, I, I mean, I, I, some people was, someone was talking to me the other day and they're like, oh, you're too old for that. I'm like, I mean, maybe I was, but I, <laughs> I loved it. So I, I, was I too old for it? I mean, maybe I wasn't a very mature 15 year old because that, that movie came out in 86 and I was 15. I remember I, I love, I loved the show. I almost loved the commercials for the toys yeah. as much as I loved the show. Yeah. And I Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime. More to meets the, the eye. eye. Yeah. Transformers. Yeah. <laughs> Robots in disguise. Huh? You were in a commercial with Transformers. I was. You were? Yeah, it was a nerf spot. We nerf spot. Wait, 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 what was the wait, what was, was the what? premise? It was the nerf house. There was an animated thing. It was during COVID and it was a nerf commercial. But Transformers played a role in it. Bumblebee, actually. Bumblebee. Bumblebee. Oh, Shout wow. out Bumblebee. Yeah. Oh my God! Yeah, I, I'm so so honored to be part of this franchise and to and to be entrusted with this character. Yeah, who's such a beloved character. Love you know, Bumblebee. Yeah. yeah, everybody loves Bumblebee, and and so I, I loved Transformers when I was a kid. That's gotta Absolutely. be crazy. Like you've done a lot of cool roles and like classic type roles, but to do Transformers like as a what do you? You're probably a little older than me. A little but, older than you, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but like in that our age group, that was so big, and like 
the reboots and stuff that they did with Michael Bay, like Transformers, like as a, if you're a boy, you loved Transformers. It's a, it, for a boy, it, it's an American institution. It is. Girls too. And, 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 and I mean, lots of girls that like Transformers. And I think there's a character in this movie that's played by um, uh, Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. Named, uh, the character's called Alita One. And I think a lot of girls, a very kind of empowering character. And I think girls oh, are really going to dig Hell it. Hell yeah. I think girls are really going to, you can take your daughter to see Definitely going to bring her. Oh, it's, she, yeah, so much. She's fun. at the age now where she likes like she she likes little action stuff. I, oh, I, she does. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So she'll enjoy it. She'll enjoy it. I really did. I really did. I it really sparked my imagination when I was a kid. And you play with the toys. I wanted all of them. I, I think I had like one of them, but I I wanted all of them. I just I just thought it was so great. And then the world that the fact that the world kept going. Yeah. And that Michael Bay put his stamp on it. And um, it, it just, it's just, it's, it really is part of the fabric of, of entertainment in our society. It's definitely an American uh, novelty, uh, what is it called? All the franchise, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. franchise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like one, of, it's yeah, one of the top franchises. It is, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. For like a long time. Yeah. So it's, it's 40th exciting. anniversary. 40th anniversary. Yeah. 40th yeah. anniversary of the show coming, coming up. up. So we thought it'd be kind of fun to do NFL football players and transform them. Current guys, past guys, and let's transform them into guys and uh, transformers that we, oh. we have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's so see like here. a Megatron. I came up with like, who's a Megatron of the NFL right, right now? Right now? Yeah. Mike Evans. Mike Ooh, Evans? Mike Evans. I like that one. Mike Evans is a Megatron. What about TJ Watt? Oh, T.J. Watt's even better. That's better, Julian. You know what I mean? Julian, that's better. No, but like yeah, yeah. T.J. Watt. No, no, because he's secret like destroy. Or Miles yeah. Garrett. Miles you're Garrett. Still a yeah, 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 yeah. You're still kind of bad guy, so it leans to defense as an offense guy. As an offensive yeah, guy, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. It's funny. I was thinking too inside the box. I went with another big dominant receiver. Yeah. As opposed, you know, T.J. Watt and Miles Garrett are very good examples. I, I was think of what, if receiver wise. I would say. Uh, DK Metcalf, maybe, DK because Metcalf, yeah. he, he's a specimen. He's always fighting other guys. Yeah, that's you know right. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, yeah, kind right. of a, he's very aggressive. He's always fighting. Yeah, he's he's like, always fighting. Flag, <laughs> flag, flag, <laughs> flag. Matt, number 14. Is he 14? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, number 14. Ooh, um, Soundwave. Who who would be Soundwave? Ooh. Soundwave. Who's, by the way, my favorite Transformer. Yeah. Um, oh, Why? my God. Let me say. I I liked him because he is, he because he's like, Four transformers in one. Yeah. Because when his little chest would open, the little the little the, the little mini bots, yeah. the mini <laughs> cons would come out of his chest. And he also he was different than every other transformer because he had a robot voice. Yeah. And every other transformer had a regular voice. So, but he was he, also a radio, he, and he was a radio. He was like a boombox. I so love that. You think that his voice would be compatible to be whatever it wanted? Yeah. Oh, that's true. He could. Yeah, you're right. He could have just. He could have changed it. He could have changed, but he never did. It was always like this. <laughs> he had the robot voice. You know, whatever you say, Master Megatron. <laughs> like it was, that was his voice. I loved, I loved that he had that voice. Let me see. Soundwave. Who would Soundwave be? Is a loyal soldier to Megatron. A communication S officer. A little spy action. A maybe a cornerback. Spy. Yeah. Spying on the Maybe TV. like a Sauce like Gardner. So Sauce Gardner, oh, yeah. Because, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. you're a cornerback. You spy on the quarterback. Yep, he spy, he spy, yeah. He's messing he's, with his communication because he's trying to get that ball out to someone else. Sauce, like Sauce a corner. Gardner's good, yep. Sauce Gardner. A corner would be good. I mean, who else is that? Um, or a safety. Or like a, um, like Sertain. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? He just got paid. What do you think, Jack? I like I like the Sauce Gardner angle. I think it's got to be a corner. A guy that's I think, back yeah, there somebody spying. susses something he's out. Yeah, he's spot, yeah, he's keeping an eye he's on the loyal guy. He's yeah, yeah, nice. yeah. I like it. Or uh, Kirkpatrick, maybe a Kirkpatrick or a Trent McDuffie, Safety. maybe Trent McDuffie, mm -hmm. McDuffie. Mm -hmm. Duffy. Now we're talking Chiefs. All right, well, let, let, let's go to Optimus Prime. I Ooh. thought for Optimus Prime, it's kind of like it's got to be Travis Kelsey. Uh, Travis Kelsey. Yeah. For me, I, I mean Captain America. You and know. also like the 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 spirit of yes, the team, yes. the spirit, spirit. The, like 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 uh, an intrinsic leader. So it's not a quarterback. It's just he's the le he's like the spiritual leader of 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 that team. And if Taylor Swift was gonna date any Transformer, it would definitely <laughs> she, be she would definitely Optimus Prime. Prime. She would date Optimus, Optimus Prime. Prime. <laughs> Come on, a hundred percent, man, a hundred percent. Oh my gosh! All right, let's go to Bumblebee. Your character. My yeah. character. So Bumblebee would have to be, because he's like the cheerleader. I'm trying to think who's a cheerleader. 
Not like a cheerleader. Not a cheerleader, but, but like a support, like a really supportive player of other players. I think he's like a third down running back. Third down running so back, So like yeah. all time, it'd be like a Darren Sproles. Yes. Darren Sproles. Would be like a Bumblebee, you know what I mean? Yeah, get him yeah, out yeah. the backfield, get him in the open field, a little <laughs> yep. Darren Sproles yeah. route. Oh, yeah, because he's smart, like scat, scat scatty. Back. Yeah. Scatty. Back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scatty. Yes, he's a scatty, yeah. <laughs> I mean, no one's better than Darren Sproles. He was the- Barry Sanders. Yeah, Ooh. yeah I mean, well, the, the, best of, the best of all time. He, the best of all time. Is he the greatest of all time or the best of all time? He's the boat or is he the goat? <laughs> I think, oh, no, he's the goat. I think he's the goat because he ran as many yards- East and West, as he did North and South. Yeah. And so, <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I, mean? <laughs> I wish they would have had GPS monitors back then to see his like run chart. Run the run, yeah, exactly. To see exactly where he was. I mean, he was six yard run, 46 like, yards. 46 yards. <laughs> <laughs> But the good we'll count it <laughs> like a badass, like the, a third and four, the, but third and four, right, exactly. And we would, yeah, that took a minute and a half yeah. off the clock. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so, well, right. According to his dad, he's the third best running back of all time. Yes, Brown. it's Jim Brown, and and who did he think was his the dad same? himself? <laughs> oh, his, himself, his, <laughs> Barry's dad himself. Yeah. Oh my God, he goes, he's the third best after me and Jim. Uh, Shout Jim out, Mister Sanders. <laughs> he was comparing himself. <laughs> To Jim Brown. <laughs> Better than Walter Payton. Oh, my God. He, he also Walter. hated Oklahoma State, Barry's dad. He, hated, he loved he hated Oklahoma. The oh, he that's loved right. Oklahoma. And hated Oklahoma State. Doesn't matter that his son ran for 4,000 yards in one year. <laughs> like crazy. Mr. Sanders, OG hater. It's a really complicated relationship <laughs> there. I like. Made for a great running back, though. Mm. <laughs> Alpha Tryon. Alpha Tryon. Okay, so he's like... Alpha Tryon's like an older... Kind of wizened veteran, right? You know Andy what I mean? Reed. Yeah, yeah, he is. He's Andy Big Reed. He's, I mean, he's Andy looks Reed. Like him too. Yeah, he's got the beard. He's got the yeah. beard. You know, it's Andy Reed. It's a hundred percent Andy Aaron Rogers? Reed. Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers. He's the oldest guy in the oh, league. Yeah, right oldest now. guy in the Full league. Player. Yeah, maybe Aaron. Maybe Aaron. But he 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 has more. He does. He's got more largesse about mm. him. That's why I think Andy Reed's Andy the better Reed. pick, especially and also m more Andy circa Philly. Oh, than, yeah, even, yeah. than even now. Ooh. I think because he was, he, he, I mean, he's wise now, but there's, he, there was some, when, when the mustache was a little more, had a little more, <laughs> it, was, it was looking like, you know, a little more red in it, you know? I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it is Andy Reid now. Maybe he's more now. Because if, when you see the movie, you'll see this guy's like got some mileage on him. Yeah. I'm wrong. It's now. It's Andy Reid now. Andy Reed. You're gonna pat. You're gonna eat those nuggies. You're gonna eat those nuggies. <laughs> he's a little commercial. He's a great. He's a great commercial. He's hilarious. I fucking think Andy Reid is so funny. He's uh, He's one of the best I've ever. I, I couldn't believe how good he was in that it's commercial. Insane. You can let me eat the fingers. His little fat <laughs> you fingers. Can eat those nuggies. <laughs> could you Could you imagine a commercial with Belichick, Tom, and Gronk? Like those three are on now. I don't think it would be as good. No, I don't think. Here's the thing. You. I will say this. Gronk, to, Gronk, to, Gronk can take Gronk, a lot of work. Gronk, Gronk, Gronk could do it. Gronk, you know, we, I, but my wife and I have worked with Gronk a lot, and he's always he's always game for everything, you know, which is the best. He's always game for oh, yeah. it. Um, the thing about Belichick is this: if you cast him correctly, and a reason I say that is because look at Nick Saban. Nick Saban on the Affleck commercials, they cast him correctly. And that what's no, the, the Airbnb, uh, Airbnb one? Is Airbnb, Airbnb, Airbnb or uh, Verbo? Is Verbo, 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 Verbo. Verbo. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. On the Verbo, so perfect. That is like perfect in the Verbo. So you could, if you could get Bell, if you can. But slap, Bill hasn't embraced his assholeness yet. Like he, even his it, him out right him on, now. You see him on Inside the NFL now, and he's all smiley, <laughs> and you're like, you "What see, who's this guy?" You want to see the real Bill? You, you get the the 15 most shitty plays of the week, and you put them in a, a dark room and have them watch that. That's when you see real Bill. That's the real Bill oh Belichick. My yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Well, that that was a fun well, segment. So yeah. Before we move on, this is a Lions episode. Megatron, we have to just say Calvin yeah. Johnson. I mean, you have to say Calvin Johnson. Yeah. If we're going historically, yes, 100%. Yeah, but I don't I don't look at Megatron. You're looking I, at the personality Calvin, yes. of Megatron. I don't right? think he's a, I don't think he's, I think he's Megatron as far as, because he's a huge ass robot that's dominant and like that. But like, I don't get Decepticon vibes from Calvin he, Johnson. From Calvin he, Johnson. Was, he was such a selfless dude. Selfless. He's got like more Optimus Prime qualities yeah you're right he does he does because he's more he is he was very practical yeah and also he was very pleasant he was a ple he's a he's a very pleasant guy he never asked to be a leader no nope. people he just led because people followed him they, they followed he That's couldn't, Optimus he Prime couldn't help it that's Optimus Prime he's he was a born leader yeah, yeah. he didn't he didn't have a choice because his greatness 
The greatness was not thrust upon him. He was born great. Yeah. He's just been great his whole life. That guy, he is an impossible human. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it's not, you can't be that big and be that fast. You can't be that rangy and be that controlled. Now you're talking to me, he's Megatron. It's I mean, no. <laughs> Just attitude-wise, no. Attitude-wise, no. Attitude-wise, no. But, uh, I mean, as a specimen. Because whoever blurted that out of their mouth the first time, it's just as a specimen. Same thing with him. I used to, there are people who I watched in college. You know when you get that man amongst boys feel? Yeah. Him, uh, Plaxico Burris, were these, these guys who just. Rob did that in the league. Yeah, yeah. yes, you're right. It Rob looked like a man, a, a man amongst boys. Yes, it's crazy. Rob would just be <laughs> six guys on him, just bro. <laughs> when you would run, Holy I remember God. running next to Rob, and it sounded like you were next to like a Clydesdale. You could hear his feet hitting the ground because they're so big, and you could feel the weight. And he'd be like giggling, like <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> like when a guy would like hit him, he'd like. <laughs> Like <laughs> stiff arm him to the ground. He'd be laughing while he was doing while it. While he was doing it. Like, I mean it was literally like a high school kid playing with second graders. Yeah. He until he's, the guys figured out to just they were torpedoing his legs. I was just gonna say that's the and only then, way to get him down. That was the only, only way to get him down. Yeah. But he was jumping over him and shit early in his career. Like he he was one of the most dominant dudes I've ever seen. He was he was unbelievable. He's another person. Yeah, he's not like not a human. Like the way Miles Garrett yeah. is now in defense. Like, what are you? Like, he's a mutant. You can't, uh, yeah. You can't. I mean, yeah. I mean, Rob was just a juggernaut. But so was, Ma uh, so was uh, Megatron. Oh, yeah, Megatron. Both yeah. beasts. So let's let's jump into the game. Yes. Jack, let's run through these, these Chiefs break down quick. these Chiefs. This was week the, one, so we're talking in the future oh, here. Oh, no. They would go 11-6 and six this season. But they would this go was Andy season. Reid, Matt Nagy, Spags. Spags. Had that Spags. defense turned up, Fucking baby. Spags. 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 Beast. And this was a Chiefs team that, I mean, they won the Super Bowl, but considered... Kind of a down year for the Chiefs yeah. in a weird way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They lost four it was games a spotty at home. year for them in a way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but won the AFC West for the eighth straight season, uh, and like we said, worst record in the Mahomes era, eleven and six. I mean, just shows how good it is. Yeah, great mm -hmm. to be a Chiefs fan. Uh, this was Rasheed Rice's rookie year. Valdez Scantling, Canarius Tony, Pacheco. Pacheco. Man, does he run hard? Pacheco. Oh my god! Yeah. Nobody runs like he, that guy. He runs angry, angry, he angry. Like stomps the ground. <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah, and, and, and the super high knees. Yeah, like he's he's attacking the ground. <laughs> yeah, but like like if it's like he's got claws down there. It's like a pile driver. He's unbelievable. I don't yeah. want to be the ground. Yeah, I don't want. <laughs> I, I screw the guy who's trying to attack the ground. Well, the he's ground is like ow, ground. Ow, yeah. ow. Ow. Now, what are your thoughts of these Chiefs, man? These, these guys are pretty insane. But it, going into this game, what were your thoughts about the Chiefs? Well, I thought, I thought, um, and, and mind you, Kelsey wasn't playing. This th game. Yes, that's what the, the hyper extended the, knee. We do have to say, put that in on that has to be part of that has to be an asterisk that uh, is part of the game. Chris Jones, still, is but we're still game. dealing with it's part of the game. You have to play without this play. They returned a bunch of people. Now, the interesting thing is, right, this is the first year after Tyreek left. Yeah. So you kind of go, okay, all right, maybe. who? Rashi is an, un, um, an unknown, unknown quantity. Rookie. An un, an, a rookie. But I, I, this organization is run so beautifully that they, they know, every, they're strong on every, every aspect, every facet. They know how to draft. They know how to keep people healthy. They know, they, they, uh, they, they run great schemes. Uh, so I was, I was intimidated and I was scared. I, I didn't know. I thought this will be a test. And I did. I initially, most of my being was thinking to myself, okay, we'll give them a good run for the money. We, we might lose by a, a field goal. We'll go into our season with some motivation. I just thought it was such a huge, there was a huge spotlight on the beginning of that season. Like you said, a Thursday night game, a night game. No, it's not just a Thursday night game. Susan, it's Susan banner Oakland. dropping night. So the, the, oh, the, the Detroit right. Lions are there for are, the whole are festivity. Are standing there for the festivities and the, yeah, and the Super Bowl banner coming down. I mean, that's, I've played in a lot, three of those. Like yeah. the other team... They gotta watch. They that. gotta watch all that happen. They right? gotta watch it so. against the very <laughs> dominant 2022 team. Yeah, and and so I, I mean, I was shaking in my boots. You know, I just thought this is not, this is not gonna. I mean, I don't know how this is gonna go for us. I liked it. Yeah, I liked it going into this game. You know, I, I was. You like Detroit? Going I like Detroit. Game? I think I, I don't know if I did, but did I call him? I believe in, you inside did. Inside the NFL, uh, yes, did you? you did. I you did. It, baby, the whole Tyreek thing, and you know, I. It wasn't like anything against the the Chiefs, but you know when you have to rebuild the team, I wasn't worried about them as a team as a whole for uh -huh. that year. Oh, oh, got it, got it, got it. They're smart enough, which they've proven these last three years to 
learn how to win ball games during the season while collecting wins. So, yeah. but I knew yeah. this would be a tough one. You guys were playing your best ball at the end of the season. Wait, I guess we did have momentum you coming had momentum. into the season. That yeah, was a lot. And, yeah. Now I gotta ask, also ask about the Chiefs. Like, what's up with all the celebrity Chiefs fans? Like, are you, you know, like Hollywood people? Um, like, you, I, they get like such a quaint, like they're like the cream of the crop kind of Hollywood fan. You know, and then you look at like Detroit fans. You got like you got Kid Rock. You got Eminem, Eminem, yeah, 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 yeah. Tim Robinson, you know, Tim Robinson, Tim Robinson, Tim Robinson Sam Richardson. Tim Richardson. You know, yeah, so yeah, like yeah. Bob Seger, Bob Seger. How, Jeff Daniels. How do you guys look into your like Jeff Daniels? Yeah, Jeff Daniels, Daniels. That's a great one. Yeah. Like, what do you guys think about the other celebrity groups? Do you guys have a text chain? A little like Anchorman, we know about Street Fight, Chiefs text chain. There's, you know, the John Ham and Paul and Rudd. Paul Rudd and yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. We've we heard it, you know, because they've been winning. What's the Detroit text chain we, like? You know, do we have one? I don't. I, I don't, think we need to start one. I, we should put start me one. on it. Yeah, I'll put, you, it. I'll put you on it. Yeah, <laughs> we don't. We, we need to start our text chain. We really do because I, it's now. I can I can text Tim and Sam nice w- whenever I want. Tim and Sam. Um, I know Jeff a little bit. Um, I remember when we were doing Key and Peele, and I went to I went to work one day. And they were shooting Newsroom, that uh, Aaron Sorkin yeah. show, at the, the stage next to our stage, like across the lot. And a friend of mine from Detroit was uh, was uh, playing like a featured extra role on the Newsroom because he had done plays at Jeff Daniels Theater in Chelsea, Michigan. Wow. There's a th- little theater Heck called yes. the Purple Rose Theater in Chelsea, Michigan. It's about 40 minutes, uh, 45 minutes outside Detroit. It's just outside of Ann Arbor. They even cast the... Extras from Detroit to get the yeah, real. That's a, that's a yeah. good Hollywood. That's and good. So he came. So my friend, his name is John John Hawkinson, and he came out there. Big Lions fan. Shout out John. And I remember, and I remember us sitting there and talking. And I went just went in like I got to just I just I did knock on the the trailer door just to say hi to Jeff and and introduce myself. And then I think we had like a fifteen minute conversation. It was like go Red Wings. You know what I mean? Go Lions. Let's go. And because we and, and and we talked and and then who was there that day? Oh. Aaron Rodgers was there. Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers was there. And he and I remember Aaron Rodgers happened to be on set that day. And I remember him saying, talking about how gifted Stafford was, and that I think it's very, very possible that Matt Stafford will be a first ballot Hall of Famer. Oh yeah. He, so, so that was that was when he was still on the Lions. And we he was still playing for the Lions, right? Oh, I solidified yeah. that. Now Good what ball. wait a minute, but what was your question? Oh, we don't have the text chain. The text chain. But I I sh- we should start when I should I need to get Jeff Daniels' phone number Got and be on Got that check text chain. The other thing I've n- I can't believe this. What would the text group name be? Um, well, if, you know, if I, if it were up to me, because I'm a nostalgia guy, I would call it Restore the Roar. Ooh, because that's I what, like that. That's what they used to say in the '90s. We used to say after the, anytime we had like a, a, a halfway decent season, like under Jim um, Caldwell, we had some good seasons where we made it into the yeah, playoffs. Yeah, I remember. And we'd say Restore the Roar, Restore the Roar, Restore the Roar. Yeah. That would be my thing. That. Or um, ten claws out, or something like that. Ooh, you know, I like something that. like that. And then I would get Jeff on there. I've never met Marshall. I've never met Eminem. I've never met him. Yeah. I don't know when it's gonna happen. It's gotta happen. I haven't Got met him. him yet. Gotta meet him. I mean, and he would I get him on there. I can't believe so, you haven't met him. We've never met. We've never met. We gotta work it out Got so him. that I meet Eminem. Um, and then, um, and I've then, never met him either, though. And then, Mike, yeah, me neither. <laughs> 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 and um, I would put him on there, and also um, some of our business leaders, like you know, like Mike Binder, or maybe um, uh, that's smart. Who owns smart. the um, Keegan? That's that's right. That's businessman right there. Who owns, <laughs> who owns Quicken Loans? Oh, um, I know who you mean. And uh, the Cavaliers. Uh, yeah, um, uh, Dan Gilbert. Right? Dan Gilbert. Yeah. Thank you, Dan Gilbert. Is yeah, he from Dan Detroit? Gilbert. He's from Detroit. Oh, so yeah. does he secretly root yeah. for the Detroit team? I think. I think maybe he does. Isn't it crazy that he owns the Cavaliers? He's that from is. Detroit. Yeah. I just outed uh, 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 Dan Gilbert, but um, and Quicken and, and, and Quicken Quicken <laughs> Loans, Rocket Mortgage, <laughs> and uh, and so yeah, so that's who would be on that text chain. But definitely Tim and Tim and Tim and um, and Sam are my buddies. Yeah, they're my buddies. Yeah, that'd be great. Jack, let's break down the Detroit Lions. Oh, let's get into these guys. Come on now. Uh, this was, again, they would go 12-5. and five. This is Dan Campbell, Ben Johnson, Aaron Glenn. This team, on that hard knock season, that's a lovable coaching staff. Lovable coaching oh, staff. Those guys, you want to have more players? Glenn. Aaron Glenn yeah. is my boy. I love me some AG. Cool, guys. Yeah. This is the third year of, of the Dan Campbell era. Yep. And you got you to gotta, uh, remember this is Jameer Gibbs and Sam Laporta rookie the Rookie year. season. Beast. The rookie season. And yeah. what you Beast. say earlier in the interview? Building through the draft. Build that's, into the draft. That's 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 how you win. So smart 
in both phases, both draft and our pickups. Yeah. Because that's Hutchinson. the season we got David Montgomery from Chicago, mm -hmm. from the Bears. And people aren't looking at hey, through the draft, though. Hutchinson, Panay Sewell. Sewell. Beast. Panay Sewell. Great. Right. Pick. They're calling. The best yeah. Yeah. at his position, hands down. So athletic, so aggressive. Yeah. He's unbelievable. Sewell. Um, and we got, and we, who else we got? We got CJ Gardner-Johnson CJ, CJ, yep, CJ Gardner he, came in there and Cam Sutton, uh, Cam Sutton. And, um, so we were trying again to retool and stack our secondary because that's where we were finding some of our weaknesses were and, and people could pass on us. And so they were trying to fix up the secondary there. So th those guys were great. And then of course I'm a wide receiver. I love wide receivers. Yeah, yeah. I, I always wanted to be a wide receiver. I was the, never the build for it, but that would have been my position. So the I grew way. up at a time. Like Lynn Swan and Stallworth yeah. and, and um, uh, 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 Drew Pearson and oh my God these Jerry Rice early Jerry Rice oh loved them all yeah. um, Lofton oh, that's when I grew up so Amon Ra St Brown it's like you and Welker and that guy I, these guys who can run in the slot run all over the place and I love that guy yeah he's a I, stud and and for him and what does he do. He knows all the people. Was it 17? 17 wide mm -hmm. receivers picked before him. He knows every single one of their names and where all of them went to school. Yeah. And he, I think he reads that list before he goes out on I the field in German. every game. In German. He does it yeah. in German. Yeah, I think he does it in <laughs> does German. It in German. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, he's he, great. Yeah, he's a great football player. He's, you know, when you just said that, that's another thing Dan Campbell does. Dan Campbell recruits and drafts football players. Football players, yeah. not specialty play. He he drafts, um, and this is something I was really I was speaking about Liverpool earlier. Something I really love about soccer and about Liverpool. Um, they have a new coach. He's a Dutchman named uh, Arne Slot, and they had a German who was their coach for years named Jurgen Klopp. And Jurgen Klopp's philosophy was like eleven water carriers. Like everybody's willing to do whatever job they've got to do. Yeah. My favorite thing sometimes is I'll see somebody. It'll be like a little little crossing route, and then boop, it'll be Amin Ra. It's watching the other wide receivers block, block yeah. their asses off for him. Yeah. That's what gets me excited. Yeah. It's eleven football players. It's eleven football players on the on the field. Yeah, there's, they have a mentality, and a lot of times teams take the personality of their head coach. And, yep. and the yep. Detroit Lions, this is the kickoff of when they did it. Mm -hmm. This specific game, you know, they were getting hints of it the year before, but it, you know, they didn't really. They didn't. They really started get, too slow. Started too slow. Started too slow. You can't yep. do that. But the best time to play your best football is the end of the year, and it carried over into this into year. This season, into this season. Into this yep. season. Jack, let's hear about this game. Let's run through this game real quick again. Banner first off, night. All right, banner night. But banner the, the fake night. punt in the first was no, it the I'll first tell drive. You know something's up in this night in Arrowhead. Fake punt in the first quarter. quarter. First quarter on the twenty on the twenty yard line or seventeen yard line. Insane. Even worse. Even worse. Balls. MCDC is letting them hang tonight, baby. Balls. Balls. That's a, that's a lengthy scrotum. <laughs> <laughs> Long ball. Is that Danny. what holds them? Yeah, yeah. the whole yeah, scrotum yeah, holds yeah, them yeah. in there. That's the sack, if yeah. you will. Yeah, yeah. The container, <laughs> if yeah, you will. Yeah. Yes. Hey, mm -hmm. and that leads to a great Amon Ross St. Brown touchdown. Gets him on the board early. He did a little Hingle McCringleberry, too. Did a little Hingle McCringleberry. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Two bumps, two bumps. Mm -hmm. Only two. Yep. Oh, my goodness. And the Chiefs follow up with the Rasheed Rice TD. TD, yep. And then uh, a bad fumble by Josh Reynolds in the first half uh, leads to another Kansas City touchdown. Which is also very, uh, which was very uncharacteristic very. of Josh Reynolds. Ball yeah. on helmet. Real great possession receiver. Yeah. Great at getting first downs. Yeah, yeah. He's mm -hmm. gone now, though, right? Yeah, he's this gone. Year. Which makes me real. It's all. But that, that Williams kid looked good. Williams looked great. He's nice. And Khalif Raymond got a couple. Khalif Raymond has to pick up the slack where Josh Reynolds left off, but he's going to be fine. It's going to be great. Got faith in him. Down 14-7 at the half. Start the second half hot with a Brian Branch, another great rookie. Pick six. Pick six. 50 yarder. Welcome to the NFL, baby. Patrick Mahomes is fourth ever pick six, so it's pretty cool. Not many guys can say that. Uh, two field goals, but some bad drops there in the third. Down 20-14 to 14 now. Yep. Bad yep. Kansas City drops. That'll be a little foreshadowing. Lions come back, put together a big nine-play, 75-yard, five-minute drive, yep. capped off by a David Montgomery rushing TD. Had a big Josh Reynolds catch in there. He made up for that fumble. Uh, go up 21-20, and that would be our final score. Some big stops in the uh, fourth quarter from the Lions when it mattered most. Uh, some big drops, too. I was going to say, I was gonna say the, the, the defense did. They, they did hold, but let's just say it was not Kadarius Tony's best. It was best. not. 
day. It was not. And so I, 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 we have to keep in mind there were drops. Yes. There were crucial drops. But they, ke they kept it. They kept everything in front of them and kept them out of – I mean, I couldn't believe it as I was watching the game how things were stalling for them. And I guess at that point you kind of have to say, oh, we're no Travis. But they were drop drops. Yeah. Like, yeah. they were – he was open. Yeah, it was bad. And he should have been catching – he should have caught those balls. It was bad. It, it was, was bad. It, it was, was bad. tough, but you know that one play didn't define the game. It did not. You're right. It did not define the you game. Yeah, you can never just get on one play like a missed kick or there's like a trillion plays that compound into it. So, you know, I I, I feel bad for Tony because, but it was week one and they 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 found out a way to do it later on this year. But that's right. That's right. They they certainly did. You're yeah, right. you're right. They certainly did. Yeah, but it they were. Crucial drops. Right. Hated to see it. Hated to see it. Even I hated to see it. I mean, you, you feel for the guy, even if you're rooting for the other team. I'm I'm happy for the the circumstance, <laughs> for but sure. you feel for the guy, you know, because yeah. you go, like you said, you, you went through spring, you had your OTAs, you went through all the preseason, you're working. Nobody's trying to no drop one. passes. No one's not trying to dog it. it yeah. You know, yeah. So, anyway. so after the game, how are you thinking? I was, I, I, I was in a dream state for a while. I couldn't believe that that they had risen to the, the occasion, the way that you said that you felt that they would. Yeah. I, now, I don't know if you were feeling that way technically. I was feeling emotionally, are they going to be able to handle this situation? And I, I was like, I started, I'd already been drinking the Kool-Aid from the end of the last season, but I went, oh, this is, this is real. Yeah. This is actually happening. He's got them believing that they can keep themselves mentally tight and that they can weather the storm because it's weathering the storm against the best quarterback Arguably ever, I, I mean, like they just have to kick a field goal to win this game. Yeah, I, I, I thought to myself, I started that thinking, situation. <laughs> oh yeah, my god, oh my god. And then I guess I just thought to myself, I thought we're gonna go far. I really think we're gonna go deep and uh, have a deep run. Yeah, I mean, I, we got stopped early in the season when we got destroyed by the Ravens. Ooh, forgot about Hard that. Hard to one. play Lamar when you yeah. haven't seen him. When you have, when you haven't seen him. Yeah, he, NFC. He's got like one loss in his career. Yeah, because they never see him, never and then it's him. like you can't prepare for that. You can't prepare for that. I guy. played him twice a year, and you, you can barely play. Yeah, but, but we got to name this game, Keegan. We got to name this baby. game. What, what would you name this game? Because we have some stuff up there, but you, I know you have something in your head. I was gonna say, I was gonna say, like this isn't this isn't great. I, what I was workshopping is the dulling of the arrowhead or Ooh. the unsharpening of the arrowhead. I like that. You know what I mean? The unsharpening because, because for them to be in that hostile territory when they're dropping the banner, what else could I say? Uh, or the banner betrayal. Banner you know betrayal. what I mean? Um, the, something, there's that. The arrowhead banner awakening. The, yeah. Huh? Arrowhead awakening. The arrowhead awakening is good. I just saw that there. Motor City, listen, it, it doesn't have any like alliteration to it. It's not very poetic, but it, it was a Motor City statement. If we were putting the whole league on notice that we're, we're here. Ready. Motor we're, City foundational the, statement the, game. The, the, <laughs> the, the, the Motor City, the motor, it was Motor City Madness. No, but I guess that would have to have happened in the Motor City. I do like the Arrowhead Awakening. Let's do the Arrowhead, it, like, Arrowhead Awakening. Awakening because it, it. it is the awakening of, of a new philosophy mm -hmm. for our franchise. Let's, let's yeah. the, the Arrowhead, Arrowhead Awakening. Awakening. Yeah. All right, let's score the game. This is brought to you by Transformers 1 in theater September 20th. Is this the greatest game of all time? Let's score it. Zero to ten stakes of this week one game on banner drop night. Uh, <laughs> decimals okay. One to ten. Uh, the stakes. Okay, so the stakes. Mainly the stakes are for the Lions, but also can't you know Kansas City wants to show up. Yeah. yeah. So I think the stakes of this game. Uh, oh gosh, I think I'm giving this like an eight point five. Eight point five. I really am because stakes. I. Because because they have to prove that they're going to come back and do it again, which they did, and then they have to, uh, and then Detroit has has the opportunity. Like, are you going to take advantage of this opportunity? And they did. Yeah, and they did and in center. dramatic fashion. It's a one point win. Yeah, I I think that's a, that's a good score. I'll give it a, a six point eight. Six point eight. Okay. Six point eight. Six point eight. Oh, I went low. Sorry, you Russian judge. You went a six point eight. And I went, oh, you guys went low. Four four I'm sorry. Regular season game. Six point ah. eight. All right, I gotta. I should have changed my score. Sorry. I mean, I we've gotta, done Super Bowl. No, it's good. I got, but but you 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 have a better perspective. I have a better. Having been in in actual Super Bowls, where especially, I mean, especially your biggest Super Bowl, where you that game was insane. 
because you were to be trailing the way you were trailing, and then it's it's like, are they the dominant team? Is this happening? Is this Atlanta going to be a team for the ages? That whole thing, I, I scored too high. Oh, no, it's I scored too high. Most people do I scored too high. Let's yeah, go. Yeah. Star power of this game. People in the building, people on the field, Hall of Famers. What's your star power? Zero to ten. Decimals okay. I mean, I guess star power was a seven. Like a, a seven. I think that's a very. I'll go seven. It's seven. Just just a straight seven. That's a pro. Because yeah, yeah, you yeah, still got seven. four or five Hall of Famers. Six, you got six four over here. Quarterback right, Travis right, Kelsey. Yeah, Travis, yeah, Andy yeah Andy Travis Reed. is in the building. You see Andy Reid. Newcomers. There. We could talk about this game in five six years, and there could be a couple on the Detroit's. That's true. That's true. If, if we if we if we won the big one, yeah, or even won the big one a couple times, yeah. Let's let's gameplay. The gameplay zero to ten. Decimals okay. Gameplay Take punts. I, pick six. Yeah, the pick this six is great. The inner night start kickoff of the yeah. season. Losing on a drop is not great. That's not for great game gameplay. play. I, this may also, and maybe I'm going. I think this also might be a seven. Seven. I think a seven. Yeah, it, it, it's right. a it's a decent game, but mm -hmm. there it it was kind of sloppy. Little sloppy. First game uh, of the year. Uh, yeah. It was a little get the sloppy. Rust out, get the rust. It was a get the rust out game. Yeah. Even though the stakes were high, in my opinion, it was still a bit of a rust. Get the rust out game. For the slop, I'll give it a Gronk 6.9. 6.9. 6.9. A, a Gronk. 7.9. I was going I, high. I like I this one. Oh, you, did, you like the game play. Fun. I okay. remember watching it right here. Yeah, we still watched got, it. Made some money on this one. Yeah. Hey, now. Now, the name of the game, <laughs> the Arrowhead Awakening. We got to score the name of this game. I think the, I, I'm. I I think the name is really solid. I I'm going to give the name a nine. Very like good it, alliteration. It's a great, the great 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 use of alliteration. You know. Yeah. And, and another thing, we could look on this game in five years mm -hmm. in the the awakening of the in uh, Arrowhead uh, of the Detroit Lions of the Detroit Lions. This could even have more cultural impact. This yeah. specific game. Because what if we become a dynasty? Really what agree. if we? Something I mean, let's pump the brakes. <laughs> let's pump the fucking brakes. <laughs> let's make it to the playoffs first. Hey, they got to win this they, year. I, I know two wins. Let's go. I'll I'll give it an eight. An eight. Okay. Okay. See, I scored it before I knew the name. Four zero. Oh, oh, geez. Oh, now, wow. Wow. Where does it rank all time? I stand by four two. All right. Where are we ranking here? Calculating, 6. calculating. 6.59. That puts us right above uh, out the club game, 2014 Week 11, Pats versus Colts, with, we did with Rob. Gronk took. And then with right Gronk. behind. Yeah, he Gronk tossed Morgan the guy time. out the club. He drove him back. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and then right behind Miracle in Morgantown, 1999, Mike Vick, Virginia Tech. Mike Mike another class. Virginia. Oh, my God. That game was insane. It was. That game was insane. He was so insane to watch. Unbelievable to watch. He's one of those people that you go, you know, when we're old men, you go, and then Mike Vick, you don't know from football. <laughs> yeah. Like Mike Vick, like seeing that game was that game and also the game they played against Florida State, the, the, yeah. the national championship oh, game. Yes. The, watching him in those games is like was like watching Michael Jordan's whole career. Like you get to say that you were alive when Michael yeah. Jordan played basketball, that you were alive when Mike Vick played football. Ridiculous. I went to Virginia Tech because of Mike Vick. <laughs> I kinda I, I went to graduate. I kind of went to Penn State because of football. I, I, yeah. I went to Penn State because I'm like, wait a minute, that's Rosie Greer and Franco Harris and uh, Capaletti. That's why I kind of went I went to school. Uh, I know the feeling. She I went to football. Kent State because I found out that they were gonna play Virginia Tech. <laughs> <laughs> the Vic effect. The Vic effect. Kiki, we missed anything about this game? I don't. Th I don't think we are, I, because you reminded me of one of the more important things, which was the banner drop. Is that I forgot about that yeah. part of the ceremony because we've never experienced it in Detroit. Yeah. Is that sense of? It's a day of celebration. You rained it's, on that parade. It, it, it would be really <laughs> rained on that parade. So I don't think we missed anything. Thanks for mentioning that because that that's really actually an important component to. The drama of that of of, the, of of how that game unfolded, without a doubt. And in yeah. your perspective on, you know, where this could go, you know, that, I didn't really think of that. That this is this could be a statement game for this organization going forward. I, I think so. I yeah. really do. And because now it's because I believe maybe it's a little. I'll pump the brakes again, but I'm going to say it anyway. Look at how we won against the the fashion in which we won against the Rams in Week One of this season. Yeah, it's the same thing. Is that it's a close game. It's a grind. How do we figure out how to come out of here with a win? Yeah. And they did and they did it again. And they did it again. Given any circumstance and all circumstances, what do we need to do to win? You know what? 
You got to do anything it takes to win. Anything it takes. Just like Transformer 1's going to win in the theaters this September 20th. Yes, sir. Oh, baby. (laughs) Yes, sir. Keegan and Michael Key (laughs) over here as Bumblebee. This episode is airing on the inaugural Transformers Day. Happy Transformers Day. This is the 40th anniversary of Transformers. Stay tuned for special announcements. Check out Amazon.com slash Transformers for hundreds of exclusive Transformers products. Thank you so much. Thanks you want to plug anything me, else? No, that, that the, 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 the one other thing that I'd like to plug is um, uh, uh, we have a book. My wife and I have a book. My oh, wife's wow. my, my, my creative partner. Awesome. And, um, and we wrote a book called The History of Sketch Comedy. Oh. Wow, and uh, and it's it's it is available uh, in hardback. It's a great book. It's and it goes. It's pretty extensive. It goes. All, it's not just kind of TV sketch comedy. It goes all the way back to the Greeks. Yeah, and uh, to ancient history. And the um, the audio book is coming out very soon. So I just want people to have that on their radar. But as we also come into the holiday season, it's a great gift. And if you're if you're a comedy fan. This is it's a really I it's a really terrific I'm clearly I'm biased but I think it's a terrific book. Does it come in audiobook? Yeah, it's a, the audiobook audiobook is coming yeah. out soon. Perfect. The audiobook is that, the yeah. audiobook is coming out. Not a reader. Soon. <laughs> Not a reader. Okay. Yeah. Can't Listener, read that well. Not a reader. You, you yeah. see me on the teleprompter. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, but thank you again for coming, thank man. Thank you, awesome. man. This was great. Man, Keegan knew a lot about the Detroit Lions. He's Real a fan. lifer. Real fan. He sure did, bro. Dude, Real I, fan. His hierarchy. Oh, I love when someone has like a very specific sports fandom hierarchy. Yeah. That's how you know they, they're in it. He gave us a real answer, too. Yeah. <laughs> Jack. <laughs> Optimus Jack. Optimus Jack. That's the perfect. mask stays on, honey. <laughs> All right, I'm just kidding you. Now I'm like a catcher after he's going to meet with a pitcher. Come on over here, buddy. No, I think you're more like the gladiator when he is about to talk to... Are you not entertained? He's about to talk to the bad guy. What's the emperor? What's his name? Commodores. This joint? Yeah, I think it is. How about Denzel? Remember, he goes off, he takes it off, and he goes, Maximus Aurelius. What is his last name? I think it's Aurelius, isn't it? Maximus Aurelius, father of a murdered child, husband to a murdered wife, seeking his vengeance in this life or the next. That's what it reminded me That's of. That's acting right there, bro. Should have did that. God, they should have put you in the new gotten the new movie. What? You should have did that a year ago. Maybe you got in the new movie. <laughs> but that, that was, was fun. Yeah, he was great. I love great. Lions Talk. A lot of li- Lions Talk's always fun and and just Detroit people. They're awesome. MCDC. Yeah. Although I'm so sick of having Chiefs talk. Like I it was a great game. I'm glad he picked it. But like how about those Chiefs? Yeah. Yeah, Chiefs were awesome. The Chiefs were great, but how many Chiefs games have we done? So we've done a lot of Chiefs games, we've done a lot of Pats games. Yeah. When you win, there's a lot to talk there's about. A, when you win, there's a lot to talk about. That was awesome. I like, I mean, that is a certified ball knower. Yeah. He knows ball. He knows ball. Came in here. He knows sport. He knows yeah. sports, bro. I mean, he, that's he, why he's, he, he like he's a hosts sportsman. SBs. Didn't even get to ask him about the honors. honors. Yeah. Oh, my God. He I knows. feel like he's, he, and he, he came and did a big thing at our Fox ceremony. He came and, oh. like, performed for us, oh, and yeah. he lit it up. That's so sick. Yeah, Dude, he, did, he knows did a bunch of raps and shit. He like he rapped the Eminem's lyrics to like the kickoff of the season. He's really talented. Yeah. Dude, I hate we didn't get to ask him about the Obama dap up skit. I know we didn't ask him Obama dap ups. Dude, dude, when I met him, I went in for the. I was kind of going for the dap, but I went for the shake. I went for the shake and then the pat on the shoulder. You got a shake? Yeah, I guess. So shoulder. I guess he gave What'd me you the dap. Oh, Ooh. you got the dap. Maybe I just got it. I think you got it like that, bro. Kyler, what'd you get? I think I just got a handshake. Oh. Yeah, definitely a handshake. Yeah. Dude, I thought I had enough riz to get the damn uh, dat, bro. I don't know, man. I guess you just got to have the mule. What is it called? The, the mule? mewing? Mewing? Cut this. Cut this, editors. <laughs> Strong jaw. <laughs> oh, no. Cool 12-year-old TikTok stuff. So cool. <laughs> oh. Bro, but also, I got to point out, for all you keeping track at home of our sartorial scoreboard, if you will. First blazer in the nut house. That is showing reverence to the nut house, baby. That that is showing reverence. I like it. We gotta fact check that. Is that true? Very, very I wore a tux. Uh, facts, facts, facts. Not correction. Blazer, correction. Not a blazer. We said maybe guest, the second though. We said guest. Yes, 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 yeah, yes, okay. yes, yes. The Sorry. guest, Kyler. You did wear a tux. It's not always about the tux, okay? <laughs> we get you wore a tux. James Bond. We wore a tux. And oh, Rocky my. wore a tux. He looked cute. 
But for guests, it was our first blazer. Bumblebee pin and everything. What a guy. What a guy. But man. I can't wait to see it. Yeah. I can't either. Killer cast. Fun for yeah. the whole fam. Everyone's, I mean, it looks awesome. Steve Buscemi yeah. in a Transformers movie? Yeah. Let's freaking go. Let's go. The Boosh, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love it. Well, we really haven't talked about our live show on the, oh, on the show yet. Have we? Yeah. That's right. How cool of an experience was that? Unbelievable. I, I still, man. I'm still riding a high, man. It was pretty cool. It was an awesome venue. The Wilbur, the Wilbur like, Rocks. Was awesome. Everyone that runs it is amazing. Yeah. Not just, you know, I've been to shows there and it was a little surreal to have our own get up there, you know, and, and the support from everyone that came from the fans, but even the guys that came and, and helped with the show, Danny, Unbelievable. Rob, Rob, Slater, Slater, Ernie, 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 like, Dola, Dola, Camille Dola. was there too. Camille, yeah. Camille. They were so gracious with their time. It was yeah. incredible. And it was fun. I was yeah, it was really love. fun. It was it, it, it reminded it felt like the locker room back in, you know. <laughs> it really did, bro. We had a, so many of us in there. The green I mean, room. And that was a group that kind of <laughs> hung out that group a little bit. Like that specific group. I mean, Ernie wasn't in there as much. <laughs> but he would be walking through sometimes. Bro, Ernie was cracking jokes. He was in there hanging. You see how slate though? Oh, you know, lower God. octave. Oh yeah. So fellas, hey, yeah, yeah. You know, a serious joke, a serious talk slow. You, you know, just <laughs> you, you ask yeah. about something. Joker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, trying to get one better one day at a time. Uh, take it week to week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A good group of young guys in there. Can't believe we pulled it off. I can't either. Yeah. Two in one night, back to back, sold it out. It was incredible. I mean, you guys. I wouldn't even. I hate to uh, gas myself up. I didn't get that nervous. Did you guys get nervous? Nah, I was not yet. I, I mean, like, I was at first a little bit, but yeah. we didn't show it. I don't think I had a show to put on. I wasn't I, nervous. I was just stressed oh, about doing the. Whole it was, thing. and it we was, had a busy week. Yeah, we recorded a lot that week. We had, we had a couple, a big bro, You look fresh Boston. in the hockey jersey, though. Camille yeah. took your other one. She I know, loved she it too. Could, you know what? It was meant for Billy, but she can have it. Hey, yeah. If it's good enough for Camille, it's good enough for us. Shout out to the IT people too. Who was that group? Yeah, Our guy uh, Element. They were great. They. Yeah. they the whole they staff. knocked it out. The show was forty seven for like all the merch. Oh my god! Yeah, peep game, peep yeah, game. I yeah, give one see. thing though. Second second show wasn't as good. We're not. That's not what we do, right? We don't do live show. So I think that like first show had like it was almost perfect. Yeah, it was juice time wise. You know we. I don't know if a. You know people started drinking a little too much. <laughs> yeah. C. <laughs> Energy levels. I mean, Slate's passes bedtime. Dola Gronk passes bedtime. Gronk PG. passes bedtime. Ernie in the back. Ernie. Ernie <laughs> I think he was taking a nap in Dude, between I had shows. To hit Ernie with the smelling salts, bro. Yeah. <laughs> he said, "Hey, anything to get out there, baby. You get Our, out there. And you give us fifteen. Come on, Ern. You know. You know. But he he played tired. He did, baby. Fight through fatigue. He, you know, tough for sixty. And the resilience. It was a good show. I'm just yeah. saying, if I want to no. be nitty pity, the yeah. second show. You know, it lost its steam a little, and that didn't lose its steam, but it's it just a different energy. Different energy. Yeah. yeah. What? Uh, oh, Ernie was wearing a blazer too. Fuck, blazer talk. Uh, yeah, live shows. We have to decide. <laughs> we have to decide if live show should be included in our top game canon. I think you got to. It's mm. not public yet. Now there will be content right. that comes out, right. and some of the, we'll see about how much of the shows and whatnot. But it all looks good. You'll what do you guys content. think? Outside, we'll let them just yeah, uh, yeah, well, sound I mean, off in the comment comments. about if the live show should be included in canon. We did the Chiefs, uh, excuse me, we did the Seahawks Patriots first Super Bowl, and then we did the 28 to 3 Falcons Patriots Super Bowl, yeah. And yeah. then the Falcons superseded became our new. Are we gonna do another one? one? Overall. We got to do a couple more. Not, we're not, I don't know that we're gonna become the Beatles and invest in a tour bus right the away, Beatles? but I want to. I think can we, we got. Can we get to the Oasis first before we just start throwing <laughs> fucking Beatles? Hey, hey, let's get a year under our belt. So, you trying to maybe hit that Oasis reunion concert? When is it? It's like I think this summer. Yeah, definitely got it. We got to go over the pond though. I think we got to go over a pond. Yeah, I don't. Th I think Meadowlands is is. People are saying it, but I don't think it's confirmed. They got to bring it over to we America. We got to do it for an old Liam, baby. Uh, you know, it today is gonna be the day. You can't just, if you're going to do that and only do it in the UK, like, then it ain't that big. Bro, we got to go for the You cross boys. that pond when you want to be real. 
Hit on the, hop on the Concord. You want that? Air, you bro. want that American culture <laughs> just, behind you, buddy? I was just doing a deep dive on the Concord and Wikipedia the, the, Concord the other day. Rocks. Yeah, they're bringing it back. Are they? The Concord is it's coming so back. I think next summer. Yeah, it is. But fuck, oh, that's so sick. Why? And they're also because the sound. Can we please it, no, go? It, the sound? It burns so much fuel, and like it doesn't. It's a smaller plane, so it doesn't like travel many people. It's almost like you'd rather be in a first class now and have like lie down and like. A better situation and burn two hours than being like cramped, not have the internet, and just like go. Fast. They'll have the internet on that thing. Probably the new ones will. The new one's gonna have internet. They're, that thing's gonna be badass. It'll probably be a bit, little bigger. It's 2024. Yeah. That the shit went down 30 years ago. Yeah. That was, what is it, 30? The last least. one was the probably in the 90s. Like 2000, mid 2000s. Mid 2000s? That's 20. We got computer chips oh, in three. Pe oh, three. Yeah. Concord made his last ever flight November 26, 2003. Departing Heathrow. Landing in Bristol, England. That's not very far. Jeez. Um, hold on. July 25th, 2025. Wembley Stadium. That would be sick. Oasis. The boys were there. That'd be sick. That'd be so sick. Yeah, well, before we... Today is it's never gonna, gonna be a day. day. Gonna be back, back to you. My wonder wall, dude. We no, gotta wrap this up? Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> say... <laughs> Hold on, before we get, before we jump, this was a really special night. Yeah, it we was. had so many people there came out in support. We took over the Wilbur. Yeah, so man. cool, like see you guys in person. It was and amazing. Dap you up and yeah. wave and hang out and get to say what's up to the people. Before we get off it, would love to do a little rose and thorn here. What was your guys' high points? Eh, maybe a little constructive criticism. What could we do better? If you're your thorn, if you will. My rose. Yeah, what was your rose? AKA your your favorite part. Hmm. What's your rose? It's pretty cool. I'm more of an arena. My style plays better for arenas, <laughs> like 20,000. But when you get a big laugh from an intimate crowd, like 1,200, 1,400, whatever, that's a great feeling, man. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Coming out there, getting to pump up the crowd, get a couple chest bumps and some some flexes on them when you're wearing the Nocta tracksuit. Like, that was cool. <laughs> that was great. I really liked that. That was my rose, I think. I think my rose was like when all our, our guests came out, they got yes. big round yeah. of applause. Amen. And I think it made them, they, they enjoyed yeah. that. I like that. The Ernie chant was cool. Ernie was awesome. Ernie chant was like a rose. Ernie, Ernie. Still echoing. What about yours, Kyler? I'm going to be so terrible. <laughs> I'm going to be so terribly on Come brand, on. But like, honestly, the Tam afterwards, just to like the bar we went through, just to be like, Exhale. We did it. The show was good. It was a good environment. It was good fun. People seemed to like it. There was a lot of stuff going on. Like, I didn't realize how much that show was. We don't do live shows. We're cameras and edit type of people until I actually, like, put it off. Like, the moment after where we did it, the exhale was my favorite part because I think it went off really well. I think you guys, I didn't talk so much, but you guys, like, crushed it on mic. Like, all the guests crushed it. The show went off. All the people was great. So, for me, it was at the end being like, oh, deep breath. We fucking pulled it off. Well, I had another rose. Hey, it on me, baby. Jack's outfits were pretty fire. <laughs> Every no, you know I got a thought about Jack's rose. outfits. Jack has been talking for like a year and a half about merch. Just merch, merch. When are we going to get merch? How are we going to get merch? People want merch. All the merch. Merch, merch, merch. And he comes out wearing like a fucking tracksuit with like no fucking merch. That tracksuit was swaggy, though. <laughs> hey, I had to do it for Drizzy, baby. Big Scorp, we love you. <laughs> Sign me a knock the deal. Come on now. Uh, <laughs> hey, I had the nut house hat on. I had the nut house yeah, hat on. Yeah, the nut house but you're right. I, I did yeah. kind of say, yeah. I repped Metal Wood and I repped Knocked over the boys. I don't think not, I wore anything. I wore a hat. You wore the hat. You look great, bro. Real ripped, real defined. I like that fit. Yeah. What? Well, no, it wouldn't be a day without a glaze. <laughs> <laughs> we also got some, hey, cool, we got some cool gifts. So our meme lord, Dolan, he sent like some, or he brought, we got to meet him actually in person. He brought a ton of t-shirts that were so cool. And then also our uh, friend Gabby from Germany, a friend from Germany, she came. She got all these like awesome German stuff. They're actually back here. So shout out to her. Deutsch. Um, Lon. Love the support. It was great kind of Germans. being in person with the fans. Like, that it was. was kind of awesome. It was fun. It was a great night. Thorn. Yeah. We're going to do a thorn? I already kind of said my thorn. Oh, late show. Different energy. Yeah. I, I think... It was like three hours of being on for you guys. That's a lot. It was late in the day. Like, there's a lot going on. A lot. Oh, my th my thorn was? We my thorn was two days before when I didn't take any out over the fucking green monster. That's my <laughs> goddamn thorn. <laughs> Fuck Bro, you show. had a couple stand-up doubles off the wall. You're good. 
Yeah, but I mean, I mean, they give us fucking pitch machine. That was lame. What what are we doing, Toronto? Full pitch machine. No, but at least Toronto let us throw. That's true. They at least up. let us get in the cage. Nothing. Hold on. Nothing but love. For nothing but love. But still, the Jays and the Reds. I uh, if you, if you, I was mistimed on that thing. You didn't get any warm up swings. You didn't get to get lubed up. I mean, shout out like to my 20. guy, Jack. You didn't lube him up. Who's my guy that gave me the gloves? <laughs> oh, um. Little stud. These the baseball guys. They look so young. They're know, so bro. young. It's crazy. And they they were. I mean, you could tell they're all jacked up. They're like studs, little young studs. But they're like their their faces looked young to me. I was like, I just always remember the the big leaguers looking like the baseball players always look like men. Yeah, yeah. You know, you always looked at a baseball. That's a man. Now I must be old. They really did look very. They were ripped young men. Addison Barger was that him? Maybe the third baseman. I'm trying to place a face I here. Forgot. It wasn't young Vlad. I was I was like in so much of a like it happened real quick, and I I gave oh, him a look. Bowden Francis, the pitcher, yeah, yeah, he's a beast. Yeah, Spencer Horowitz. I, he yeah, gave me his guys, batting man. gloves and his bat. He's like, go ahead, go out. And I I, I didn't get. I, I was just kind of getting ready to focus up for the swings. I wanted to take a couple dingers out because you know last time I was there, I took out like six. And so Kyler gave me an over under on two. And I'm like, I'm gonna smoke this Joker. <laughs> House always hammer wins. the over. The hammer the over. Wins. Dented that fucking monster. That's my thorn. <laughs> my my thorn, I think, is that we spent a lot of time trying to make the show as awesome as possible. So like a lot of like pop and like we did a lot of stuff. It was like when we brought out Dola and we brought out Ernie and just nonstop like stuff happening and. Then, I almost like felt bad like in the middle when you, there was like conversations like, oh, right, this is still just a podcast. Like I felt like this was like a whole like extravaganza. So it was just kind of like we built up and did so much stuff that it was almost like, oh, we might have like, I don't know. It was a good show. It's a good show. Awesome. Maybe, maybe we'll do one in New Orleans this year. Ooh, in the Big Easy down in New Orleans. Should we do it at the Super Bowl? Yeah. I don't know if we can get anyone there. Lloyd? What, is there Easy? anyone interesting? No, I'm talking about fans. Football. Bro, we, we got to get Juvie on there, have baby. A, have an empty ass, have empty set out there. Hey, yeah, we we sold out 2,400. And That's in Boston, though. You know, know, we're different in Boston. But it's a football crowd. It's our town. There's a lot of podcasts happening. It's our market. Get Juvenile in the nut house. We're good, bro. Manny Fresh. Juvenile? That'd be sick. Bang, 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 That's when Lil Wayne came out when he was like 13 years old with the, with the fucking... John Randy. Can't stand it. Yeah. Dick bandit. <laughs> Put my dick in the middle like a bandit. <laughs> Bro, we should we really should get Master P on this pod. Uh, Mango say, say the uh, time uh, to rock. Nah, 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 nah. nah. He's a hooper. Mango say, uh, uh, nah, uh, nah, 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 Mango say, uh. <laughs> Remember his little son, Romeo? Oh, bro, how could I forget? He was on the USC basketball team, man. Yeah. Little Romeo. Peace. I see DC college. I fucking loved Master P. Well, what a game. Thanks again to Keegan. Remember to check out Transformers 1 in theaters September 20th. And visit the Transformers store at Amazon.com slash Transformers featuring over 100 Transformers products, including Amazon exclusives, special deals, and the hottest items inspired by the Transformer 1 film. Prime members enjoy fast, free shipping on every order to add on to the transformer celebration on september 19th i'll be at a watch party for the patriots versus the jets thursday night game at the game room powered by hasbro located in american dream next to metlife stadium they'll have transformers one themed surprises and more it's gonna be a blast patriots win that game Yo, Ooh, Maybe. I hope so. It's open to fans starting at 6 p.m. Eastern time on September 19th. I look forward to seeing you there. That's another episode of Games with Names. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. Comment a game you want us to do. And remember, rate and review. Remember to follow Games with Names on YouTube, Instagram, X, TikTok, and Snapchat. Leave a message on the hotline at 424-291-2290. We'll see you guys next week. Later. Games with Names is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, 
visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.